a quick demo to uh, to showcase the capabilities of this uh, service in uh, in GCP. All right. So when we talk about uh, security on uh, on Google Cloud, um, if you are running applications on on premises, you you will be responsible for the whole security stack. You will be responsible for um the physical security of the uh, of the data center itself for you hosting the, your services the hardware uh, the encryption of the data the integrity of your network the security of the content uh the, the data that you are storing on your application on your storage on your virtual machines uh, that's all end to end is the responsibility of the uh, of the customer when you move your application to the cloud it's it's completely different. It will become a, a shared responsibility between the customer and Google. Uh, so when you move it to Google Cloud, Google handles many of those. Uh, let me just bring up my um, uh, laser pointer here. So many of the lower level um, security stack is, it will be handled by Google. And this is if you are using, for example, uh, a virtual machine, which is uh, an infrastructure as a service uh, service in uh, in Google Cloud. So all those layers of security that will be handled by by Google, and the the, the higher level of the uh, security stack is is managed by uh, by Google. So you, here we're talking about obviously the uh, the host where you you are creating those VMs, the data center itself, the uh, the storage encryption, the audit logging, and then the higher level one is you you start in installing your operating system where you are responsible on to patching that, installing your application, web application security, deployment of your application, and then uh, and again giving access to, to those services that you can leverage on, on a virtual machine, either it's data or code or whatever that might be. The more you move in into managed services, so um, platform as a service, something like App Engine, something like BigQuery. So you have um, less access to the underlying infrastructure where these services are running because Google are managing that for you. And because they're managing that for you, obviously they take the responsibility of the security that comes with it. So the level of responsibility for the customer when it comes to security, taking uh, when, when you use platform as a service or software as a service or serverless services, it will be a lot less. So the more you move in into the serverless services or um, software services, software as a service services, you will be to the point where you will be responsible just for your data. You break your data and yet you're responsible to who do I give access to that data? Read, write, read only. Uh, so you have that, that control over that. But ha having said that, uh, Google doesn't go and say, okay, it's your responsibility, deal with it. Google, uh, they give you the tools uh, to implement those security controls. They give you best practices to follow uh, and, um, and the rest of it. So you can, you can implement best practices in place with the right tools. So, and when you get to, uh, for example, to, to cloud storage or storing data into the cloud, um, and uh, as, as the storage aspects, um, you will always have to control who have access to your data. All the requests of the data, obviously, ultimately, they will become um, uh, a service call via REST, so some kind of an API call. But and that those calls must always have must must always authenticate. You might have uh, authorized them uh, to do some kind of uh, task on that service. So you you would be responsible for that. You need to give permissions to uh, as part of that call to to access the data or or whatever you need to do on on that particular service with that uh, service call, and you can't make any inauthenticated REST calls at all. So what are the tools that Google gave us to have that governance over over access? We have identity and access management. And identity and access management is basically three parts. Is basically who which is the person I need to give access to and can do what, which is the permissions that I need to give them and on which resource. So I need to give them uh, kind of these three parts, which call, which we call like a, a, an identity and access management policy, which will be like a binding between uh, a user and a set of roles and applying that policy into uh, a resource. So the resources in, the, in GCP, uh, they are organized into, um, uh, containers logically 
those containers, uh, they come back in a hierarchy. So uh, the hierarchy that we create with what we call the resource manager, it will be the, the organization uh, level node, it will be folders. So um, it, will, it will look like um, something like this. So you will have an organization at the top, which you represent your, your organization as um, a workspace or a cloud identity where you have those accounts to, to be created in uh, in what was called before G Suite. Uh, so you will have an organization level at uh, on, on the Google Cloud Platform. And then underneath it, you can uh, you can have another logical isolation of uh, what we call folders. So folders, they can represent uh, legal entities, they, they can represent departments, um, environments, projects, uh, projects in, in a sense of uh, uh, project that you are working on within your organization. They can represent uh, products or um, uh, applications, application projects, for example. And you can have up to 10 levels of those folders. So if you are a big organization, and we've seen some uh, use cases where organizations bring that org chart into this resource hierarchy. And then under the folders, you create the projects. And this is the project is the main component where you create resources. Uh, so this is where you get built. This is where you can enable those services. You uh, you um, you can get control over have access at this level as well. And then you create your resources uh, in there. You can create the VMs, the uh, cloud storage, the app engine services, the cloud run. Uh, that I think you you, you uh, there was a session earlier about it here. So these are the services that you can uh, you can incre inc create under uh, under those projects. So you won't be able to create anything directly under a folder or under organization. And with that, um, the, uh, I can give access. I can give access to resources at any one of those levels. So this is basically represent the uh, on which resource, the third part of the, uh, of the identity and access management policy. Where do I apply those uh, permission, uh, permissions at, at each one level? So I can apply at any one of those levels here. And then what you get is uh, the permissions. And the permissions in GCP, you can't give directly permissions to resources. You have to have uh, roles. So uh, a role basically is a set of permissions. And each, there are three, three types of roles. We've got primitive or what we call basic roles, predefined and custom. So pre primitive roles, is, uh, they are very, very broad. I can apply them to uh, all the resources in, in my project. So they can be so powerful. And, and they could be uh, have three types of, ro of roles in there, owner, editor and viewer. So viewer, and we have browser as well. So starting with a browser is somebody who have uh, who can see just what, uh, what are the resources that exist in my hierarchy. And a viewer, like it says here, somebody who's read only access. An editor, uh, somebody with edits, permissions to all the resources in the project. They can uh, add data, remove data, deploy code, configure services, delete services. So editing, uh, with all the permissions that comes with that. And then the owner will have all the permissions included in the other uh, roles, plus they can delegate permission to other resources in there. So I can add users and give them permissions to any resource in, in the project. So they are the owner of the project. But the, these are kind of, uh, they are very broad, they are so powerful that I won't be able uh, to, to, um, to be using that, for example, in a production environment. This is suitable for, uh, test environment, for example, because these, especially the editor and owner role, they can be very, very dangerous from security perspective. And for that particular reason, uh, Google have created uh, some kind of granularity into the services uh, in terms of access uh, with what we call predefined roles. So all the services in GCP, Google have created specific roles for each of those services with uh, with a set of permissions that comes with it. So if I take BigQuery, for example, I will have like a BigQuery admin, a BigQuery viewer, or BigQuery connection viewer, Big, BigQuery connection admin. And each one of those has got a set of permissions associated with it. So I can assign those roles to the, my teams just to do those, uh, be able to do their task within um, the scope of those permissions only. Uh, and you've got kind of um, hundreds of those uh, predefined roles uh, for network, for security. There's, there's many, many things that you can uh, apply to your roles. So you have uh, more control uh, over the security. So moving into what we call uh, the, uh, the, 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 the concept of um, uh, the, the least privileged access. So uh, I just give permissions just to uh, the, the right permissions to, to do the task that I'm, I'm supposed to do, nothing more than that. But even though in, in some situations, what you will find with these predefined roles, uh, they are 
even broad in terms of if I have security concerns, for example, around uh, deleting stuff. Uh, so if I don't want to, as part of this role, I don't want anybody to be able to delete instances, I can go and create what we call, this is a browser role we talked about earlier. So you have just the uh, provided access to browse the hierarchy only. So you can just see what, what is the hierarchy uh, uh, items only. So yeah, I said like uh, the custom roles here, I can I can be more granular. I can from the pre from the predefined role, I can go and create a custom role. So I can filter out the permissions that I don't need, and I can bring in permissions from other role predefined roles. So I can customize it to um, to a particular team, for example. So for example, here what we see, uh, this is more likely if somebody some someone to do just with the data and storage services. So um, I they created this uh, privacy reviewer and I got just like the list and read only to storage, spanner, big table and things like that. So this is kind of uh, more kind of uh, moving towards this, uh, the principle of least privilege, just giving the exact permissions that I need. And the, I, the, I, the, uh, the IM policy, like I said, is uh, a list of bindings that's going to bind a role uh, that's going to have like a, the role with the, with the, with the members that I need to give access to that role and apply it to uh, to a resource and I can apply it to any of, of those levels I can apply it to the exact to, to the uh, to organization level to the folder level project or exactly directly into into the uh, the resource and with that you get what we call policy inheritance so uh, my my uh, permissions will trickle down to all the resources underneath that so if I'm an owner of an organization I will have full access to everything if I have ownership of a folder, I won't be able folder A, I won't have to access to any of the items on folder B, but I have full control of anything underneath that, the projects that come underneath, the resources, and so on and so forth. And with that, I go, there is only another security concept in, uh, in, in GCP, which calls the uh, organization policies. So organization policy is uh, a configuration of not giving access, but of a restriction. So, um, so I can define or I can configure what we call a constraint. So if I want my organization, for example, uh, not to be able to, uh, to add public IPs to my VMs, for example, across all the organization, I can do that with, with this um, policy organization, organization policies, which are constraints. And I can apply again at any level. I can apply at the organization level, at the folder level, or other projects, I can be more specific than that. Or I can do it at the organization level. And if I want to to um, to uh, to exclude the project, maybe for my networking team, to be um, to be able for them to be able to create VMs of public IPs, but nobody else, I can apply at the organization level, and I can exclude a particular project for my admins, for example. And this is com so some of the uh, some example of uh, constraints. So I can disable VM serial ports. I can disable service account creation, uh, image uh, trusted image projects. So there's a, 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 a big, a very large list of those constraints that uh, we can leverage and uh, put them into into practice in our organization. Okay, so this is the control over uh, over access to to services with cloud IAM and uh, constraint policy. Uh, organization policies. Uh, when it comes to, to networking, we look at the security from a different perspective. So we're talking about here, which, uh, which, which, uh, which kind of traffic I'm allowing uh, to, uh, to, to go, for example, to, to accept traffic through my VMs, for example. And this is where uh, things like firewall rules will, will come to play. And then uh, if I want to, uh, we talked about the constraint not being able to have public IPs on my VMs. But if I do that for my organization, how do I allow them to access the uh, the, Google, the Google API services? How how do I need to how do I make a, a VM without public IP access Google Cloud Storage, for example, or access BigQuery? Because those are Google services that got public IPs. So without that, and this is where private Google access is uh, is super important here and uh, very very useful. So for the firewall, uh, obviously there is nothing new here for firewalls. So uh, first of all, we can apply them to uh, a VPC, uh, which is a network, right? Private cloud network. So a VPC network on GCP is uh, is a software-defined abstraction of um, 
any like a network that you have on premise, but it, it is so powerful. It comes with a lot of features. So the VPC uh, lets you create and control your own private, logically isolated network where you can deploy your Google Compute Engine services like uh, VMs instances, Kubernetes Engine instances. So anything that is infrastructure as a service. So I can create VMs into into those networks so they are i am in control of my network as such and it's a global service which means that i can create resources in uh, in different regions and they would be able to talk to each other over the private ip space uh without needing to egress to the internet which which makes it a, a powerful kind of uh, uh a, a powerful offering or a powerful service in uh, in gcp to be able to have maybe a vm in the us and a vm in, in australia to be able by default talk to each other, ping each other with the private IP. This is so, so powerful. Uh, and you can leverage it with different, in, in your design of uh, global uh, applications, being able to have a nice global re re resiliency and presence and uh, scope. Um, and each VPC network in your project uh, provides this private co communication between those uh, among your, your GCP compute resources through the IP, uh, private IP space. And you can control the uh, the traffic between that so the communication will happen so you can you can control individual uh, ingress and egress traffic uh, to be allowing traffic to go to to those VMs so by default I can two VMs in the same network in different regions like in in Asia and Europe they can talk to each other but I can have uh, for example uh, IP, uh, firewalls to to be able to okay allow this traffic or not allow it. So the firewalls uh, let you allow, uh, basically allow or deny traffic to and from VM instances based on particular configuration. So the configuration of the firewalls, basically you will apply it on, on the network that you created, and then you decide which VMs I can choose, or can select for this firewall to be applied. I can select all the VMs in my network if I wanted to, so all instances in my network, or I can use tagging so I can I can create a firewall with a tag and I can specify on my VM that tag and as long as they match then uh, the firewall would apply to that particular VM or I can use a specific service account so I can use uh, service account VMs that I created with a particular service account I can apply that firewall to Fire, some kind of uh, very interesting feature on firewall rules on, on GCP, they are stateful, which means if I have two firewall rules for the same traffic uh, going in the opposite direction, and uh, one direction is allowed and the other one is denied, if, one, if the traffic that is in one direction is allowed, at the very same time, the, or the, uh, the reverse traffic will be allowed, even though there is a firewall rule that is implied, uh, that is uh, saying that it, the traffic should be denied. And this is what stateful uh, firewall rules uh, in GCPR. And the, the parameters, the configuration items for that is uh, pretty much straightforward. You, you specify the direction, ingress or regress, uh, the source and destination, which could be uh, uh, VMs with tags, uh, the source could be uh, an, IP, uh, an IP address range uh, or uh, uh, VMs with, with a particular tag as well. And then you specify protocol and ports, which protocols that you're allowing or which ports should be allowed or denied. And then the action, either allow or deny. And then you have this, uh, another very, very interesting feature here, which is priority. And this will basically help me to, to basically decide between, if I have two conflicting firewall rules. So one is saying allow and one is saying deny for the very same configuration when it comes to direction, source, protocol, and action. But the action is, is conflicting. Uh, the same rule, one rule is saying allow, so the other one is saying deny. We uh, resolve to the, uh, the priority. So each firewall with a, with, comes with a priority, which is identified or configured with, uh, with this number between 0, 6, 5, 3, 5. The higher is the number, the lowest is the priority. So if I want the most powerful firewall on, if I want to configure it, will be zero. So if I want, uh, which basically I won't be able to override that. So if I have uh, a firewall with uh, like 150, if I am saying allow, if I want to override it with a DNI firewall rule, I'll create another one with a DNI action with the same configuration items with a firewall rule maybe that is 100, for example. As long as it's under 150, it will override the other one. And then for, like I said, the, uh, the VMs with, uh, with, um, with uh, only private IPs without public IPs, how do we get them to talk to the Google Cloud APIs services? And this is where um, 
the uh, the Google the private Google API access uh, comes into comes into play. So private Google API access enables instances or VM instances on a network. Or network to reach Google APIs and services so, using the internal and IP space. So um, and an API call will basically resolve with a, with that the API call is resolved to to a public IP, but the traffic is all internal, which makes it very very efficient. Um, and because network, the, the nothing is in, in Google's infrastructure and it's transparent to the user. And uh, if, uh, if, the, uh, if the private Google access is not enabled, then you will have to have an external IP. You have to have a public IP in order to access those uh, uh, cloud APIs, Google Cloud API services like the BigQuery, the Cloud BigTable, uh, Dataproc, all the services in GCP. And, and it's the, the configuration item for it is, um, so simple you just go to the subnet and you have like a, a tick box uh, and you just specify to be on and off per uh, per subnet basis on there if i have multiple subnets i can have this granularity to just to go to the uh, particular subnet to to enable that and then what you will have this is what what happens really so uh, uh, this is cloud cloud storage bucket here i've got two subnets one with the uh, api google api access enabled uh, which means I can access this GCS bucket with the uh, private IP. And this one here, the, um, the Google API access is not enabled. The only way I can access the GCS bucket, it's going to be with a public IP. Otherwise, no access is uh, supported here. So that's, that's all good and well. So um, this is all for the, uh, for the VMs. I have control, I have Cloud IAM to, to be able to, to have... Um, to the level of custom uh, custom roles to give the permissions to access those services. And I, I have control over my data flow from external uh, resources, source uh, sources and uh, internal sources. So can I, I can have control over that because I am, it's my VM, it's my in my network. But when it comes to the Google services, if I have like a, a cloud storage bucket or I have uh, uh, a big query data set or I'm using a big table, uh, database or a Cloud SQL database. Now we know that that data is, uh, this service is, is basically on the Google network. So there's no way for me to, to say, okay, I need to access the VMs where this kind of database is installed and I create firewall rules and so on and so forth, right? Uh, the Cloud storage, for example, I can't go and say, there's no way for me to control uh, somebody to copy data outside it if they have full, if they have the cloud IAM roles to be able to do that. Then this is where VPC service controls come into play is to have this control over uh, or have the ability to reduce the risk of somebody copying the data from your Google Cloud managed services like cloud storage and, and BigQuery. And what happens really VPC service control create what we call a security perimeter around your Google Cloud Managed Services and allow you to control the movement of data across that perimeter. So even if somebody has got like full control of a cloud storage bucket, he's a, uh, uh, I gave him maybe he's, uh, let's say, um, a contractor working for me and I need to give him full access to cloud storage bucket. If I want to control without VPC service control, they will be able to copy data to their uh, externally to their uh, to, the, to an external source uh, or external target. So I need to put that service perimeter around it so I'm in control of the movement of data across that. And the VPC uh, service control, they, they give you this additional layer of security for the uh, Google Cloud services that is independent of Cloud IAM. Like I said, you can give somebody full control like Cloud IAM uh, owner for the storage bucket, but when you put the service control around it, they won't be able to copy data out of it. So um, the BP service control enables what we call a broader context-based perimeter security, inc including the uh, controlling the data egress uh, across the perimeter. So I am in control which who's who's who will be able to copy data across that perimeter, who is not. Uh, and then you can also have the uh, private Google access on premises extensions, which allows private communication between VPC networks. Uh, if you have like a, a hybrid environment, if you are like on premises connected to Google Cloud through, uh, through VPN, for example, uh, you have VPC networks must be part 
of the service perimeter for VMs on that network to privately access managed cloud services within that service perimeter. So, so VMs within private IPs on the VPC network that is part of a service perimeter cannot access managed resources outside that. I need to give them uh, access to that. So for example, if I have a, a VM, uh, let's say within uh, a VPC network that is part of the service perimeter, can privately access a cloud storage bucket in the same service perimeter, but the VM, if I'm using a VM, the VM will, will be denied access to cloud storage bucket that is uh, that are outside of it. So um, I need to decide if I'm allowing to that and, and not. And this is where uh, I have uh, granularity into into that with uh, with some some uh, what we call access levels. So we can enable access based on the context of the request by creating those uh, those access levels. So those access levels. Okay, they can be created by the Google Cloud uh, Console, the G Cloud Command, uh, and they work in uh, kind of different uh, 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 different rules. So, um, so this is the uh, the context manager that that can help me define that. So, I can I can I can decide uh, create an access level, give it a, give it a name, and I can specify the conditions that. Uh, multiple conditions or what condition to decide what kind of uh, kind of traffic is allowed. So if I allow traffic to go out from my perimeter based on different uh, conditions, this is what I specified. Uh, so administration first, they define an access policy, which is an organization wide uh, access policy. They have access level within that service perimeter that I create. And uh, the requirements include things like the device type. So if I'm an organization, they're all using, let's say, MacBooks, for example. I can decide, okay, only MacBooks are allowed to, to access my service perimeter or an IP address space or a user identity. Those are the kind of stuff that I can specify in there. So the access policies, uh, the access policies acts as the, the container for access level. Uh, and as such, a single access policy can contain multiple access levels. Uh, so an access level is a set of attributes, like an IP address, like I said, the device type, or a user identity. So I can specify a service account with the particular permissions that I, my application is using. I can specify that if it's that service, if that service account is used, that allow the traffic to go out. So I might be using a service account for my application, and I can put that condition in there to be for that service account to be able to uh, to go over that service perimeter that I specified. Um, and really, there is four steps to create this service uh, perimeter configuration. I'm going to have a look at it uh, brief, uh, in, a, in a brief uh, demo in a second. And that would be, first of all, you create an access policy, like I said, one per organization. Um, so. Um, and then you you secure resources with the service perimeter. So we decide, okay, which services I want to to protect. So you can say cloud storage, BigQuery. So you specify those. And then you set up the private connectivity from uh, you, you you use the private Google Access security for VPC networks are protected by uh, the service perimeter. And then lastly, you get access grant access from outside using access levels. So the access levels can be used to allow requests from outside the service perimeter to resources which are protected by that perimeter, uh, but, but do not permit protected projects to access resources from, from outside the, uh, the perimeter. And the other thing that you, you can do also, you can have uh, what we call perimeter bridge. So if you have multiple projects that are protected with the service perimeter, if you want them to talk to each other, uh, you allow that traffic, you can a perimeter bridge. Perimeter bridge can be used to enable communication between projects in different uh, service uh, perimeters. So let me just bring in here, uh, if I may, a quick demo of this, just to illustrate that. Let me see. Okay, I can see that. Uh, let me make a little bit uh, bigger. Okay, so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, I'll go to the dashboard here. I'll go to security. 
and I go to, uh, first of all, we, we create a, an access rule, access context manager here. You, you need to have organization level access here. So um, I'm just going to select that. Uh, I've got already one. Let me delete it. And let me see if I've got a service control perimeter that I need to delete as well. I don't. OK. So what I'll do, I will create a context um, for those rules. So if I say, OK, I'm just going to go dev fest demo. I'm going to go with the basic. My condition now, I'm going to use this allowed region. Now, I am based in the, um, in the UAE. So I'm just going to allow anybody from the UAE to be able to access one of the services. So I'll go there. I'm going to save. So I can do multiple ones here, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it simple for the sake of this demo. And then I'm going to create a service uh, perimeter. And I'm going to decide, OK, use this access con uh, context manager rule to govern that service perimeter. So if I go service control, and I'm going to go and create a new perimeter. Uh, details, I'm going to give it a name. The first demo. I'm not. I'm not creating a bridge. Bridge is when you have two, uh, and then I'm gonna go select my project. I'm gonna put a perimeter around a particular project. Uh, so I'm gonna add that. This one. Add it. Done. And then I'm gonna specify which services I want to restrict. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, the cloud storage API in this case. So if I go cloud storage, cloud storage API. Add. And I'm for private uh, for private Google access. I'm going to leave it for every everything. And the other ones, I'm not going to configure that. Just uh, just to showcase the perimeter based on the region where I'm from. I can happy with that basically as uh, keep it simple for this demo. Perimeter created. So if I go to cloud storage, browse, I'm going to select this project, which I put a perimeter around. And Gonna open a new tab. Let me go back to the security text manager. Edit. Save. If I delete that, say something not. Go 
back to storage. I'm not supposed to see this message here because um, I think the the rule was applied before hasn't refreshed this so this should appear only if um, only if I've got a perimeter with the uh, not without rules. So if I go back to the service perimeter, for example, and um, security, access, access context manager, select. And I go for region. If I do United Kingdom, okay. One second. Let me. I'm just going to bring in uh, Cloud Console again here. Sorry. <clears throat> Security. Okay. Context manager again. Could I go for any country in here? Let me go to Belgium. Make this demo more relevant here. So something is wrong here, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna remove that, save this control. Let me delete that. Okay. Let me delete it. Okay. Start again. New. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Specify the allowed region. Save to virtual. Save that. And then go service control. You. I'm going to use it for the same project. In fact, I've got only one here, so I'm going to use that. Add done. Restricted services. Make sure I specify cloud storage. API. Add Google Cloud Storage API, create perimeter, okay. Now if I go to Cloud Storage, open that new tab, let's see what we get with this. Okay, select this project. There you go. So this bucket is showing. If I go back and OK, 
Cumhuriyet Vanş Text Manager. Check one thing here. Yeah, this is, I forgot this. So we want to apply that access, uh, the context manager rule. Okay, so I haven't done anything here. So I'm saying here, my storage bucket will be accessed only by people in Belgium. So if I apply that, okay, I refresh this. Okay, because I am in the UAE, the, the perimeter is not allowing me to, to access this packet. So if I go back here, go to the, uh, the context manager, change this to the UAE instead of Belgium. Go back to my storage packet. It will take a few seconds to allow me to access. There you go. So now I specify that only uh, anybody coming, I put in a perimeter on my project to protect my cloud storage, but only if I want to somebody to, uh, to be able to throw the traffic going from that bucket outside this perimeter, only those people from the UAE, for example. So this is the idea behind the perimeter and have control over that because it's not like a VM where I can put a firewall rules and, and allow or deny. This is Google Cloud services that I need to put perimeter and uh, use context manager rules to have a, the access over there. All right, sorry that, uh, that the issue with, uh, with that demo, but we, we got it to work. Hopefully you've got the gist of it, uh, the, how VPC controls can protect somebody to trying to uh, take data outside, data exfiltration outside my storage bucket, even if they have, they have full control over it. Uh, uh, if they don't satisfy those rules that I specify in there with the region IPs or uh, any other context rules, they will be able to, to copy that data be, be, beyond the uh, perimeter that, uh, that I put in there for them. Okay, I think that's all I've got for you. So is there any, any questions? Um, I think I'm over my time as well, so I really apologize. No, it's not, it's not. Uh, thank, you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Nab, for this presentation. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Uh, hope we uh, hope we see you again in the future. Yeah, we hope so. We hope so. Uh, in our um, future event, uh, we hope to to meet you again. Thank you. It would be a pleasure. Thank you. I've seen the question in the chat. What knowledge is needed or yeah. what training can be done for the correct use of VPC? Um, obviously, you need to uh, you need to go through the uh, Google Cloud fundamentals from networking perspective, uh, and then so you can take one day course, and then there is uh, you can leverage uh, Coursera or Pluralsight. They've got a networking specialization if you want to go deep into VPC. Uh, or there is a two days course uh, that goes through networking uh, in details. And if you need anything, this is my email address. By all means, you can, I'm going to put it in there. You can reach out to me if there is any questions beyond this session. I'm happy to, to answer those as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Email address, but no I problem. don't know if yeah, but, uh, have you seen the the message of uh, Thierry? Yeah, yeah. Thierry is saying, how do you define the perimeter for an international project? Yeah, but very good question. And this is this goes back to um, to the power of the network. So international uh, projects probably you need a uh, kind of a global scope. So it, it works the very same thing that I showed you. Uh, so here, just to show you the scope of, uh, let me just go back to maybe the console. So if I go to VPC, 
quickly here just to show you we're talking about international uh, projects here uh, okay let me bring another one let me bring uh, a production this is a test uh, So quickly here, if I bring this console, if I want to create a, a VPC, like you like you put it for an international project, I can go and uh, let me make a little bit, maybe this a little bit bigger. Okay, so to create a, a VPC, I can say, create, and what I can do, I can say, um, give it a name, whatever that is. And then I go for a custom one. And with a custom one, if I go, for example, automatic, what it's going to do is going to create for me subnets across the globe. So if I, if I need uh, 29, if I need a network that is uh, kind of uh, have a presence in, in 29 regions of all 29 regions of, uh, of Google, of Google Cloud, I can use the, um, the automatic one. Or if I want, for example, I've got my international project is the US, Europe, uh, Australia, Asia, maybe I need four subnets in for each. I can specify that as well. So I can add subnets and I can specify any of those regions. And they would be on the, on the very same network. And this is the power of the, of the Google network. And then once I create my network, give it a name, then I can, when I go to create a perimeter, like you show, like I showed you, you just specify the network, the project, uh, that is part of that network, and you will be basically protecting your your um, your network in that uh, international project, like you put it. Yeah, and then you ha you can create a bridge for two networks if you have one perimeter for one. So you can create a bridge and specify the two VPCs, and then they will be talking to each other as well. Uh, they will have different scopes as well. So that's also possible. No problem. Any any further info information, please reach out. So I can uh, basically guide you through uh, some some good links and things like that. Uh, if we want to store localization data, what is the best approach and the best technology for storing that? Okay, let me just bring in Google Cloud locations. Let's just show you the presence of Google. So Google, they exist in all those regions. So if you are if you are talking about localization in, of data in, in a particular region, what you need to do is, uh, let's say it's a cloud storage, then I would go um, if it's like any any kind of data. So what I will do, I don't want to my data to go any outside any particular region. I create a cloud storage bucket. Uh, I'll give it a name here and I specify the region and I can say this is my region where data is. If it's a database, I can go for Cloud SQL and I create a Cloud SQL for a particular region as well. Or if it's a Kubernetes cluster, also I've got capabilities to do a, a, a Kubernetes cluster in one particular region. So I, I am in control where is my data is going to be. So um, yeah. Cloud technology, basically, Google, Google Cloud will give you that flexibility to to replicate your data across or use a spe specific area, or uh, so you, you have full control over that. Okay, thank thank you very much, everyone. Merci bien. C'était c'était un plaisir. Et bonne chance pour pour le reste. Allez, au revoir. Thank you, Dr. Nabil. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.